A player once committed seven fouls in a single game. Another player led his team in scoring without making a single shot from the field. Those are just some of the strangest games we'll talk about. Not too often do you see a player have a weird game. Whether it's their stat line when you look at the box score, or simply just having an unorthodox game that doesn't make any sense. How's it going folks, my name's Andy, and today let's talk about 10 NBA players who've had some of the strangest games ever seen in NBA history. Without further ado, let's begin. Also, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe. Over 60% of my viewers aren't, but hey, if you like the content, drop a sub or a like, and thank you so much for the support. Number 10, Bubba Wells. Wells was a second round pick in 1997 and only played in one NBA season. After his rookie year, he couldn't get another NBA contract. Despite that, to this day, he still holds the record for the fastest foul out in NBA history. On December 29th, the Mavs played the Chicago Bulls. To give some context, this was a very lopsided matchup. The Mavs were 5 and 24 while the Bulls were 20 and 9. Don Nelson and the Mavs that year were horrible, and he knew they had no chance to win. That's when he tried a tactic that was revolutionary at the time, the Hack-A-Shack. Or, I mean, I, I guess it was called the Hack-A-Rodman back then. Nelson inserted Bubba Wells, a bench warmer who rarely ever plays, into the game with the sole purpose of fouling Dennis Rodman, intentionally. Everyone knew Rodman was a poor free throw shooter, so the goal was to slow down the Bulls offense and keep making him shoot free throws. As a result, Wells recorded 6 fouls in 2 minutes and 43 seconds. It was such a brand new concept at the time. Even the announcers didn't know what the hell was going on. Regardless, it didn't work and the Bulls still won the game. Number 9, Rasul Butler. Rest in peace, my man. On February 12, 2012, Rasul Butler checked into the game for the first time. It was late in the game, in fact, there were only a few seconds left in the game, but he had the responsibility of inbounding the ball. Unfortunately, he couldn't inbound it, and was hit with a 5 second violation, thus recording a turnover. But then, he went straight back to the bench. In terms of NBA time, no time passed at all. The clock did not move because it was a dead ball. So he finished the game with one turnover with zero seconds of playing time. However, the official NBA records say that he played one second, which he actually did not, but it wouldn't make sense on the stat sheet if the guy had a DNP but still committed one turnover. Funnier is that a few days later, something similar also happened with him. Butler checked into the game with 0.5 seconds left and he took the last shot, missing a 31-foot jumper that could have tied the game. In that game, he finished with one field goal attempt in just 0.5 seconds of playing time. I'm not sure what the Raptors were thinking there, letting a guy who didn't play all game take the final shot. Number 8, Cal Bodler. On November 13th, 1999, in a game between the Hawks and Blazers, Cal recorded 7 fouls. This was because the scorekeepers made a mistake. When he fouled out, they thought it was his 6th foul, but in reality, they miscounted somewhere and it was actually his 7th. This was only discovered after the game was over though, so the original box score still shows he got only 6 fouls, but it would later be revised and changed to 7. This is the most fouls anyone has ever recorded during the shot clock era. I don't think anyone will ever surpass 6 fouls again, at least not in this manner. Number 7 and Number 6, Tony Snell and Joel Anthony. What do these two guys have in common? Well, in long stretches of playing time, they just, they don't do much. A lot of times, they aren't asked to do much but still stay on the floor. This leads to some funny stat lines, well, mostly empty stat lines. When Joel Anthony was in Miami, he was always kind of outcast, especially in the first year LeBron got there. In fact, nobody would even know who he was if he didn't play on those Heat teams. The roster was very thin, and he was probably the worst player on that team who got significant minutes. In January 2011, he played 28 minutes, yet recorded 0 points, 0 rebounds, 0 assists, 0 steals, and 0 blocks. A 0-0-0-0-0 stat line in 28 minutes. 
He didn't even attempt a single shot or a single free throw. I don't know what to say. I guess he didn't contribute anything in all those minutes. But that was kind of how it went for him. For many games, he never got many touches. That's also why most people forgot about him very quickly after his departure from Miami. Tony Snell was also similar in that regard. We recognize him during his days in Milwaukee when he played alongside Giannis. Most of the time though, he would just stand in the corner or the wings and wait for a pass to come to him. Sometimes, the pass would never come. On February 24th, 2017, Snell also recorded a 0 stat line. In 28 minutes, he just took two shots and missed them. <laughs> that was it. Number 5, Damian Lillard. <laughs> Definitely the strangest game for him, not just in Lillard's career, but for all point guards. He was terrible. On March 4th, 2015, Lillard scored 5 points on just 1 for 13 shooting. But even more shocking, he grabbed 18 rebounds. That was nearly one third of all the Blazers' rebounds for the whole game. Seriously, 5 points, 18 boards? That's just so weird for Damian Lillard. His numbers were nearly identical to DeAndre Jordan on the other team. Jordan recorded 6 points and 19 rebounds that game. The Blazers still won the game though, and they needed every single rebound that Lillard grabbed. Number 4, Dennis Rodman. Rodman has always been known for his incredible rebounding, but in some games, he stated himself that he would intentionally not score, and only focus on grabbing boards. That's why, in 7 different games in his career, he recorded 20 plus rebounds, with 0 points scored. In most games, he barely even tried to score, usually kicking the ball out after an offensive board, just to send a message. There's been other players, other centers who've had similar games, but nobody did it as often as Dennis Rodman. Number 3, Hakeem Olajuwon. Hakeem holds a peculiar record. On January 30th, 1997, he scored 48 points. At a glance, it was nothing unusual. Occasionally, Hakeem just goes off and scores a ton of points. But what was strange was, he did not attempt a single free throw in that game. He scored 48 points on 24 of 40 shooting, and 0 for 0 at the line. Even to this day, he holds the record for most points scored in a game without attempting a free throw. For a guy who hangs around the basket for basically the entire game, and as talented and skilled as he is, it's a shocker he didn't get to the line. Maybe if he was a guard, you know, it would be less surprising if he only took jump shots. But Hakeem doing this as a center is almost impossible to imagine. How could that even happen? I guess one thing Hakeem's good at is avoiding contact. While other centers prefer to draw fouls and get to the line, Hakeem prefers to find the best angles and uses footwork to avoid his defender. Contrary to guys like David Robinson and Shaq who prefer to use brute force. That's why Hakeem's free throw rate even through his career is unsurprisingly much lower than those guys. Number 2, Rip Hamilton. Hamilton was usually the go-to scorer for those Pistons teams in the mid-2000s, a defensively-minded championship squad that sometimes struggled on offense. Well, not sometimes, <laughs> they struggled a lot on offense. This time, however, they severely struggled. On January 6, 2005, Hamilton became the first, and to this day the only player in history, to lead his team in scoring, without making a single field goal. Yes, you heard that right. He went 0 for 10 from the field, but hit 14 of 14 free throws. So, he finished with 14 points, and that was more than any of his teammates. The Pistons finished the game with 79 total points, which was quite common for them back then. And at number 1, Corey Maggette. Maggette was known for drawing a lot of fouls. He was kind of like the James Harden of the 2000s. He was tricky, he was very smart and routinely likes to bait his opponents into reaching in and committing a foul. Sometimes, he was known for just charging into the defense and flailing his arms, which really annoyed the other team. The most prominent example of his foul drawing prowess came during a preseason game. On October 22nd, 2010, he just joined his new team, the Bucks, and participated in his first preseason game with them. In just 10 minutes of play, Maggette shot 20 free throws. He didn't even make a single field goal. Shooting 20 free throws in just 10 minutes, that's freaking insane. 
He basically drew a foul every minute he was out there. It's hilarious cause this was literally the team's first experience with him on the roster, but that's what they expected from him when they signed him. The Bucks needed somebody who can create their own shot and get to the line at will. Maggetti was the perfect guy. Anyway, that's all folks, those were 10 NBA players who had the strangest games ever. Let me know your thoughts in the comments if you can think of any others. There's probably a lot of them involving James Harden as well when it comes to free throws. Either way, these games were definitely out of the ordinary. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope y'all enjoyed the video, and of course, as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.